Hey everybody, it's Eric. So I just want to talk today about jQuery. So I still see a lot of places that say if you want to learn JavaScript, you should learn jQuery first, or sometimes even jQuery alongside JavaScript. And I actually don't think there's any reason to learn jQuery right now, especially before JavaScript. So here's why I think it's kind of a waste of time to learn jQuery first. So I guess I should explain what jQuery is first. So jQuery is a JavaScript library that like has a bunch of helper functions that basically makes JavaScript easier. So you can select, let's say you want to select this button with the class of continue from your HTML and you wanted to change the HTML content to next step. So this is basically just going to change the button, the button text to next step. And so these kinds of things used to be really useful because JavaScript used to be a lot more limited whenever jQuery first came out. They didn't have as many modern APIs or niceties that we now have. So just doing some basic things was a lot harder. Not only that, but there used to be a lot of cross-browser problems as well. So for example, you'd write a line of JavaScript and different browsers would interpret it different ways. So you'd have to make different hacks for different browsers like Internet Explorer hack, a different hack for Firefox, as they'd see them differently. But jQuery kind of fixed that by just giving you this to write, and then both browsers would interpret it in the same way. So it kind of ironed out the cross-browser problems that it used to have. But that's kind of like a relic of web development. Like, modern browsers don't have many cross-browser issues anymore. They're all pretty much the same, with a few small exceptions, of course. And a lot of new JavaScript APIs make it easier to write all this stuff, whereas before it would have taken a lot more time. So, for example, I'm going to be using this uh, You Don't Need jQuery page, which I like. It kind of shows you some options that you can use with vanilla JavaScript instead of jQuery. So, before jQuery's little dollar sign syntax, if you want to grab an element. It used to be really useful, but now JavaScript has the document query selector, which is basically the same thing. So you just put document.querySelector and get the element with the ID of ID. And you can do the same thing with jQuery. And you can argue that document.querySelector is a little bit more verbose, but it basically does the same thing. So for me, it's just easier to use this instead of importing a JavaScript library just to use a little bit nicer syntax. And it's not just JavaScript that improved. Also, new CSS kind of makes jQuery irrelevant. So jQuery had these fade-in functions. You can fade in an element, fade out, and you get this little cool animation of it fading in or out. So you don't really need to do it with JavaScript anymore. You basically just use CSS3. So you'd use the transition property in order to fade things in, fade things out, or do whatever kind of animation you want. So nowadays, there's not really much use for jQuery, in my opinion. Now, some people still say that jQuery is worthwhile because it makes learning JavaScript a little bit easier. Like, maybe it's a little bit harder to learn some of this syntax, like the document.query selector. And hey, these people just want to like jump in and write some JavaScript and see things work. If you throw all this weird native syntax at them, it's going to confuse them. Well, I think that just learning the native, the native syntax for everything is just going to be a lot better in the long run for you. So maybe it's a little bit more difficult to remember document.querySelector, but you're not going to have to unlearn everything when you have to use vanilla JavaScript later. So for example, let me go down to .each. So in jQuery, you'd write .each. And then you put the array in here. This is if you want to like loop over an array, like do something to every single value in an array. So you write it like this in jQuery. Put the array in as the first argument. Whereas in, with vanilla JavaScript, you put the array dot for each. So it's a little bit different syntax. And it's not, it's not like a crazy amount of work to relearn this like to switch your thinking to doing this instead of this after you've already learned jQuery. But it's just easier to learn this first rather than having to unlearn this 
whenever you're doing vanilla JavaScript. And so vanilla JavaScript, you're going to you're going to use so much more. So for instance, if you're learning React uh, and you want to loop over something with an each loop, you'd use this for each right here. You would never use dot each with the jQuery method inside React. You never import jQuery inside of React. So you basically just have to unlearn that if you wanted to do that in React. So I feel like it's kind of a waste of time to learn this first and then this when you could just learn this first. It's not that much of a different syntax either, so it's not going to be crazy difficult to learn all this much more than jQuery. Now this isn't meant to be a video where I'm saying you should never use jQuery again. You're stupid if you use jQuery. So jQuery still has a lot of uses. For example, if you need to support older browsers like Internet Explorer 8, a lot of these new browsers don't have these new JavaScript APIs. Like these were only added in modern browsers. So if for instance you unfortunately have to work with Internet Explorer 8, let's see how to fade in an object. So you don't have CSS3 animations because they weren't around back then. So instead of using CSS animations, you have to use this horrible fade in function, which is just a total mess. And of course, using jQuery is going to be much easier for that. So it's still useful if you have a website where you need to cater to a lot of old browsers, because you don't want to be writing this for every single fade in that you want to do. It's going to be a little bit painful. So it's definitely good for old browsers. And you're also going to see it a lot in legacy code. So for example, you're probably going to be working on a project that a lot of people have worked on before. It's been around for a while. And so a lot of projects I have had have had a bunch of jQuery just because the previous developers from five years ago thought that it would be a lot easier to use jQuery. And it probably was five years ago. So sometimes you have to work with some legacy code. And things like WordPress come with jQuery out of the box. So if you're working on some WordPress website, you're probably going to run into a lot of jQuery. So I'm not totally against the idea of learning jQuery. I mean, I know jQuery, but you're not really going to use it as much for modern websites and modern web applications, more importantly. Like modern web applications are built with frameworks like React or Vue or Angular that have a totally different way of doing it than jQuery does. So you're using totally different DOM manipulation, which if you don't know, it's like uh, DOM is the, basically the HTML. So you're not just going to grab an element and change the HTML like you would with regular JavaScript or jQuery. You're going to be using React or one of these frameworks to handle all that for you, to handle all the updating for you. So it's just that style of JavaScript is not really used as much anymore. So if you're wanting to get some kind of job working on modern frameworks, modern technologies, I'd say you don't really need to learn it. And if you do get a job where you do need to learn it, it's not particularly hard to learn after you already know JavaScript. And I like the idea of learning JavaScript first and then jQuery second, rather than learning jQuery first and maybe using it and then having to unlearn that to use the native JavaScript syntax. So that's my opinion on why you shouldn't necessarily learn jQuery first. And basically, you should only learn it if you absolutely need to. So that'll probably save you some time learning JavaScript, which you can then use that time to learn something like React or Angular or Vue, just something more modern that's going to get you up to date with the more modern technologies, rather than something that's a little bit old, outdated, and kind of being phased out as time goes on. There was this nice graph I saw earlier. Uh, about how jQuery is kind of going down in popularity right here. So jQuery used to be up here, and now it's kind of below all these other frameworks. So basically, as time goes on, jQuery is going to be getting more irrelevant, in my opinion. So I just would not waste time learning it if you don't have to. So that's just my opinion. You can let me know what you think. But if you like the video, leave it a like. Leave a comment or something. I don't know. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.